Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday, June 2nd, 2022. The thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for where you are. Well, it's officially the start of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season, began yesterday on June 1st, and fittingly, we do have a tropical disturbance to monitor, unfortunately near land areas, as they often are early in the year. This is dubbed Invest 91L, currently centered near the northeastern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula, a pretty typical sloppy sheared asymmetric early season system. We have shear more or less out of the southwest, and most of the convective activity and rainfall and strongest winds are on the eastern side of a broad and elongated area of surface low pressure, which is currently centered probably just over the landmass here of eastern Mexico. If we take a zoomed in view here, we'll see some of the low level flow a little bit better. We have northeasterly flow coming toward the coastline of the northern Yucatan Peninsula. And then you'll see a few westerly motion vectors here in the low level clouds just to the south of Cancun moving offshore toward Cozumel. And you can see the onshore flow here out of the east and then under the convection we have southerlies. So you can see there's rotation here around what's probably still a little bit of an elongated low pressure center somewhere in the vicinity of Cancun. If we look at the radar from the Mexican Weather Service, we'll see again some rotation here, southwesterly winds offshore of Cozumel, easterly winds on the northern coastline, and then the semblance of rotation in the vicinity of Cancun. So all signs pointing toward low pressure being somewhere in this area here. And surface OBS in the area show that pressures remain fairly high near Cancun, 1006, a little farther inland, about 1,005 millibars. Uh, this is not terribly low, which indicates that the system has not tightened up appreciably just yet and remains rather broad and diffuse. However, there is a lot of rain going on uh, that will be spreading over uh, Cuba and parts of the Yucatan Peninsula during the day today and eventually up into the Florida Keys tonight and tomorrow and then South Florida throughout the day on Friday. If we look at the water vapor loop here, in the upper level flow, we are going to see cirrus clouds coming down out of the north over the western Gulf of Mexico and then southwesterly clouds moving over the Yucatan Peninsula and the area where 91L is currently centered. This indicates a broad upper level trough here that is causing a lot of southwesterly shear. And as the system moves generally up into the Gulf of Mexico, which is the expected motion, the shear will only increase, likely to be close to 30 knots or maybe even higher as the system makes its approach towards South Florida. And this is a common theme early in the year where shear over the Gulf is often high. So the systems we get out of the Gulf of Mexico are often asymmetric with most of the heavy rain and wind on one side, usually the eastern side, as will be the case here. And uh, because of that, the system will also likely not strengthen appreciably in terms of maximum wind speeds. We don't have an official forecast from the National Hurricane Center yet but this will probably stay in the low end tropical depression or tropical storm range, you know, winds between 30 and 50 miles per hour, somewhere in that ballpark, not expecting hurricane development in the Gulf here. However, the primary impact likely to be heavy rainfall as all of this weather ends up translating northeastward over Cuba, South Florida, and the Bahamas during the weekend. This is the European uh, model forecast, ECMWF, starting this morning, showing the low pressure center uh, where we were talking about it on the satellite loop over the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula. And what you'll see going forward over the next uh, few hours is that uh, this dry air to the northwest gets closer and closer to the system as that uh, wind shear out of the west continues to erode that western side. Most of the deep greens here are on the east side showing this moisture transport across Cuba and towards south Florida as we get into the night tonight. And then through the day on Friday, you can see this move out over the Gulf and again, all the moisture pushing farther north into South Florida. And then this simply continues northeastward and you can see the effect of the shear. The surface low pressure is actually within the brown colors now, the dry air right over the center and all of the moisture displaced far to the east, causing rain well away from the center of circulation. And as this moves uh, to the northeast, it eventually crosses the peninsula on Saturday evening. Uh, over south or central Florida, uh, but at the time that the, the center is moving offshore of the eastern coastline, a lot of the rain has already moved offshore and into the Bahamas by this time on the model. If we look at the GFS, it's a pretty similar story. The only real difference being the initial position is a little bit more offshore under that deep convection, which seems to be an error in the model. Uh, the center does seem to be more where the European model has it over Cancun, but you'll see this ends up not mattering a whole lot. The GFS shows a similar motion 
uh, toward the southeast Gulf of Mexico, toward the northeast, and then eventually across the Florida Peninsula with all of the moisture on the eastern side. Uh, the net impact of its initial position is that it does move across South Florida at a little bit more southerly latitude than the European model did. However, if you look at the end result of this, if we look at the forecasted rainfall totals, which is the main impact here from both the European ensemble showing a swath uh, encroaching about halfway up the Florida Peninsula, and then compare it to the GFS ensemble, you'll see it's a pretty similar story here. Uh, the GFS may be just a tad farther south with the swath of heaviest rainfall, but really both models tell a similar story that will have this axis of very heavy rain uh, crossing over Cuba, South Florida, and the northwestern Bahamas during the course of the weekend. And so inland flooding and uh, potentially coastal flooding if there's gusty onshore winds in parts of Florida and the Keys are the main impacts to watch for with this system. You could see gusty elevated winds, but again, we're not expecting tremendous development. And you can see on these model forecasts here uh, that there's really not a lot of tight wrapping. These isobars are loosely spaced, these black contours, and you see that central pressure still above 1,000 millibars, indicating not a lot of intensification expected on either the European model or the GFS. And again, that's due to this upper level flow. You can see the trough here imparting southwesterly winds aloft right over where the system is centered now, and that only gets worse as it moves out into the Gulf, where you can see a stream of southwesterly flow aloft right over top of the system's center, and that continues as it crosses Florida, where we continue to have westerly flow right over top of the system, maintaining that high level of shear. Now, looking a little bit longer term, uh, we will see this potentially move northeastward and actually strengthen a little bit due to partially non-tropical processes as it moves northeastward past Florida, not expecting it to make a turn up toward the eastern seaboard at this point. There is a westerly jet to the north uh, that will continue to usher this more toward the east-northeast, uh, but this could bring heavy weather to the vicinity of Bermuda uh, early on next week once we get beyond the weekend, and so we may, may be watching for that. Uh, once we get the first forecast out from the National Hurricane Center, which will likely be soon. Now, I showed you those model rainfall totals here. There's a model depiction of the rainfall over the next uh, couple of days through Sunday evening. This is similar to the official forecast from the National Weather Service, showing that swath here again. The main impact here likely to be uh, in relation to the heavy rain and uh, inland and coastal flooding. And flood watches are probably likely at some point today or tonight from the National Weather Service, but they will have more details on that going through the next day or so. Uh, look for local guidance on that. As always, with rainfall forecasts, you're going to see a pretty smooth field in the forecast here, but the way rainfall works is very noisy, usually a lot noisier than the forecast you see here. So while you see maximum amounts in this dark brown color, are about seven inches, there will be isolated amounts higher than that and uh, that's usually a little bit random uh, just because of the way rainfall forecasting works. So always be ready for localized amounts that could exceed the threshold for flooding in your area and be adequately prepared as we watch this sloppy system slowly move to the northeast and then move across Florida during the day on Saturday. We're likely to see rain begin during the day Friday, starting in the Keys, and then gradually moving northward to the central Florida peninsula, rain likely ending at some point on early Sunday as the system moves off to the east. So everyone stay safe and monitor the National Hurricane Center's website, hurricanes.gov, for the latest information for your area. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.